And good evening to you. Uh, my name is Sarah. You're listening to Modern Mystic Radio on A1R Psychic Radio, the world's number one psychic radio network. I am very, very excited today because I have uh, with me a very, very special guest. Um, I'm just going to welcome him in a minute. Uh, before I do that, I'm just going to remind you quickly of how you can get hold of me outside of the radio show. So you can visit me on my website, which is www modern-mystic.co.uk or you can find me on Facebook um, under Modern Mystic and also under Mystic Sarah which is my screen name for UK TV. Okay so without further ado let me welcome in my guest for tonight. Um, It's Raphael. He is a psychic medium based here in the UK. Hello Raphael. Welcome to the show. Hello Sarah. Thank you for having me. You're more than welcome. It's lovely to see you. Um, so I'm going to get straight into it. Raphael, how do you how do you work? What sort of tools do you use? What you know? How long have you been doing this? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, how long have we got? <laughs> <laughs> I do work in a number of ways. So I do work with a number of tools. I have my tarot cards here. I have the angel cards. I work with a variety of oracle card decks. I work with the rune stones, I work with the crystal ball, pretty much anything really. I can work both psychically, so I can tune into people's lives, their love life, their career. I'm also a medium as well, so I can connect people with loved ones who have passed over. Again, it all depends on what that person needs and the situation at hand. I like to sort of try and tailor make it for the person at the time. So everybody's different, that's why. And being a Gemini, I do like the options. <laughs> so I just work in one way, so I like to play. <laughs> Don't we all? We all like our tools. We all like to muck around with uh, different different perspectives. Well, um, yeah. uh, well, what I was going to ask, really, because you, you mentioned um, in, your, in your biography that... Um, you started working, started doing readings from the tender age of 12. So how did that start for you? Well, I got my first pack of cards at the age of 12. And, well, before then, I mean, I've always been aware of spirit. I've always seen people who have passed. I used to see faces at night. I used to hear voices in the middle of the night. And to me, it was just normal. You know, people used to say, are you scared? Are you what? I'm like, nah, it's normal. (laughs) And then my mum always had a pack of cards and never used them. They were just bought on a whim. So they were always lying about. So I suppose you could say I was born with a pack of cards in my hand. I used to pick them up and play with them, not realising what they were. And it was a little bit later on when I was about 12 that um, I think there was a school fair or school event. And my mum said, I'll take the cards in and just do tarot readings. You know, just pretend, just play. And so I suggested this to the teacher at school and he sort of looked at me like, and he went, no, I'm supposed to be professional for that and just sort of pushed it to one side and ignored it. And I thought, take that as a no then. <laughs> but from that point onwards, I thought, right, I'm going to do this, prof- you know, learn it properly. So from there, I got every book on the subject, every, you know, bought another pack of cards of my own and just took it from there and from then I learned about different divination tools and it was just something that just took off on its own then and I just explored all the different I was always the weird one I was always the black sheep <laughs> of the family so naturally I was going to go that way probably but it was just something that just naturally grew on its own and before I was about 15 I had about 10 packs of tarot cards Wow. I have an addict to buying cards, <laughs> so now it's over 275, I think it was, last time I counted. So, yeah, my addiction's got a little bit out of hand since then. <laughs> but when other kids were smoking behind the bike sheds, I was sat there with a crystal ball and a pack of cards and learning every tool I could. It was just just something that sparked my interest. And then yeah, when I your got lifelong, to... lifelong um, uh, fascination then. Yeah. So it, I don't know where it came from. I mean, I suppose in a way I'm a hereditary psychic because on my mum's side, she was brought up in a haunted pub and strange things used to happen. So my mum had experiences and she'd always been to see psychics. And I'd re- soon learned recently that my grandmother on my dad's side used to read t- um, coffee cups, the Turkish coffee cups. Oh, wow. So, 
But she used to just play it, use it as a game. She never took it seriously. It was like, oh, just give us your cup and let's just play. So either way, it was still, these experiences were still being used or played with. So it was always around. So I suppose naturally mm -hmm. um, it would come down to me, but I'm the only one who has done it professionally and learnt it properly, so. That sounds so, so much like uh, my my childhood, actually, because, um, I mean, I started working with playing cards um, from the age of 13, um, just doing them for friends and family, you know, for a laugh and, and, and stuff like that, and they were very, very accurate, I have to say. Um, and even from a, you know, a young child, my mum used to have books on the subject and what have you, so I just, I just kind of fell into it. Um, and I started when I was 17, you know, professionally. Um, so that's going back a very, very long time. Um, just curious, because you mentioned um, earlier about your childhood experiences, um, and you used to see faces um, and, and, and hear things as well. I mean, I never used to hear anything, but I often used to see, I used to see hundreds of faces per night, all different ones. Um, do you remember your, your first sort of psychic experience? It's a bit hard for me because it's always been there. I can't quite put an age on it. It was just, but I think my sort of real awareness probably would have been about three or four or maybe four or five, round about that age, when I can really sort of remember. And I didn't think anything of it. I just thought, oh, there's a face in the wall. And <laughs> I went back to sleep again. I just never, I didn't have anybody around me who understood, but I didn't have anybody around me who shut me down either. So it was just something that I used to just acknowledge and then just go back to playing with my toys like mm -hmm. any other child. So, and I used to be a kindergarten t teacher so yeah. when I left school. So I've been around both special needs and able-bodied children, a lot of which were psychic themselves. So yeah. I have been in that environment both as a child, but also been around children who are also very psychic as well. Okay, well, fantastic. That's, uh, that sounds absolutely amazing. Um, right, do you, do you... Oh, you just froze. Do you have a wow moment of your psychic career? Oh, there's so many, <laughs> <laughs> so many to, to go into. Um, I'm trying to think of some major ones. I remember when I first started developing my mediumship and I was in a spiritualist church in a circle and we were in meditation and I opened my eyes for some reason on my own and there I could see a, uh, a young girl sat right in the middle of the circle, clear as day. This wasn't wow. like an image in my mind's eye. This was like three dimensional. And I hadn't seen, I was 16 when I started sitting in circle from the medium shit. And I hadn't seen spirit that clear since I was little. And she just turned around and looked at me and then just disappeared. And then I think the week after I heard a voice outside my head say, we are here to protect and guide you. And oh, I'm like, wow. what? And after that it was gone. <laughs> So now I know that was my guides yeah. coming in to, to help me. But I was still a little bit lost. You know, in my training, I didn't have teachers that really knew what they were doing or how to really aid me in that. It was more sit down, right, what have you got? Get up, say your piece, and then sit back down. And that was it. And there was no explanation. So it's like, how do I know if I've got anything? don't know how it works. So I had to figure it out the hard way, which in one way, it's a good thing because it made me work for it. Yeah. But um, now, you know, when I teach people, I do try and explain, look, this is how spirit works. This is what you may experience. But then again, you may get something different and that's OK. You know, so I try and explain it as best I can. While I didn't have that, it was like, why, what have you got? Get off, get on with it, sit down, that's it. No praise, no acknowledgement. So it was a bit harder. But I suppose at my age, at 16, I was so eager to learn. It was like first church that came, <laughs> or the first, first class that was there. And I soon realised that, not in all, but in some churches, a little bit of bitchiness can start. People get a little bit jealous. And I just thought, everyone's spiritual, everyone's nice. <laughs> and then I learned the hard way that sometimes it's not always that way. So I did experience a little bit of jealousy as well. 
and I just had to sort of find my way through that but I'm so thankful that my guides were around me because if it was on my yeah. own I'd be like I don't know what I'm doing but I just heard my guy say, right, it's time to move on now. I'm like, where am I going to go? But they always bought something. Just as one door closed, something else opened. So. Absolutely. And, um, you know, you, that's kind of answered my one of my questions that I was going to ask you is what are the downsides? Or do you feel like there are any downsides to, um, to being psychic? Um, and that's kind of answered that unless you've got something else to add to that. Yeah, I think there's always an up and downside to everything. And, you know, they always say those who are born psychic or medium mystic can sometimes have a harder life than some other people you know, people who aren't, because we have to understand the upset, we have to understand the pain that other yeah. people are going through, but we can only do that if we go through it ourselves. So I think the major downside is our extra sensitivity and taking on other people's stuff. And, you know, sometimes people can take you for granted a bit if, if you're a bit like that. So it's a real test for you as well to learn you know, what are my boundaries? When do I say no? When do I have that cut off moment and just detach? Because it's very hard for sensitives to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of life lessons and self lessons that you have to learn about yourself as well. And I think that's probably the downer for a lot of people because we all jump in there thinking, oh, it's going to be great, and it's fantastic. <laughs> and then the hard work begins and we think, oh, no. Yeah, the small print. I call it the psychic small print. I think my signature was forged. <laughs> I, was like, I never asked to come in this lifetime. My signature was forged. I was kicking and scream. I always say that's it. I'm handing in my resignation and I want a refund when this lifetime's done. I've, I'm done. <laughs> but knowing me, I'll pull okay. Um... <laughs> yeah, I have contemplated that myself, I have to say. Um... Right, so what advice would you give some an aspiring psychic, um, you know, in terms of going into the whole sort of psychic arena? Is there sort of like one piece of advice, maybe a piece of advice you would have given yourself back in the day? I would say be patient. Be patient because it's very ego. You've got this going on, you've got that going on, you've got the tarot, you've got the spiritual, and it can be a little bit overwhelming. And I would say just take things slow, take things one step at a time, maybe narrow it down to a particular area. Like for me, I was multitasking tarot, I was trying to learn the roots all at the same time. And it really was a bit of a struggle to take it all in. So I would say maybe start with, if you want to work with the tools, start with one tool and stick with that tool until you learn it properly and then move on to the next one. If you're developing your mediumship, again, just be patient. These things take a bit of time. And sometimes we think, oh, I'm not getting anything, but our guides on the other side can be doing a lot of work on their side, preparing us for that. So sometimes you just got to trust. Trust is a big thing as well, both in spirit, but also in yourself as a channel as well. Because I, I, being a Gemini, I've got two brains, so I will question everything. Yeah. So I'll get something like, is it me? Is it spirit? No, that can't make sense. So I go through this whole question. Even now, I still do it. <laughs> really, I can hear my guys going, we just show up and get on with it. <laughs> just let it be. And I'm like, no, I've got to... But if you can just trust yourself, think, you know what, I'm just going to give what I get, you'll be surprised by actually what comes through. Because sometimes it will make no sense to you, but to them, it will. And it can be the smallest thing. So do you have any future plans for this year? Um, I, well, I'm hoping to be teaching a lot more workshops and yep. doing a lot more classes as well, because teaching is a big thing and it is... It, I, I did a bit last year and a year before, but now it's really starting to grow and people have been asking me to do that. So I'll be doing a lot more workshops, a lot more talks. I do psychic fairs around the country as well. So I'll be, be doing that as well as private readings. So I do Skype readings, email readings, phone reading, Gemini thing. I have to have all that, <laughs> you know, to play with. So I just go with where spirit lead me. It's, it's my guys that will say, right, time to teach a class now or time to, and I just follow that intuition. Rather than having a fixed plan of this is how it's got to be, I've learned to just surrender, go, okay, where do you need me at this time? Yeah. And it will just present itself on its own. But 
at the moment they are telling me to start teaching a lot more so did you find that the um the mediumship came in second or was it in first with you i would say it was in first because i was always seeing spirit and hearing spirit but i think as a child if someone said to me oh you'll see dead people and actually explain what it was i was seeing i probably would have freaked out and shut it down so i think spirit world were very clever and saying right we're going to start you with the cards we'll start you with something tangible something visual once you're used to that because once i started reading that i used to start getting visions in my mind's eye along with the cards so that was a good trigger so i think they started me with something tangible and also because i questioned things yeah. you know the mediumship is a lot easier to question well when you've got a pack of cards it's there you can't you know not question you know so i just feel that the mediumship was there first but spirit was very clever in leading me with working with the tools first mm -hmm. and then building me up from there it's just a very subtle way of getting me to do this work. Otherwise, I would have said, I don't want to be talking to dead people. <laughs> well, now it's yeah. just so. um, We're going to go into a couple of calls, but before we do that, just in case we run out of time, how can people get hold of you? Uh, should they want a reading or I uh, want to find out perhaps where you're, when you're next doing your next uh, course or uh, where you're next going to be? Okay, well, I do have a website. It's www.mediumraphael.com. I also have um, a Facebook page, Raphael Psychic Medium, and I do Facebook Live on there where I do free mini readings. Um, I'll put notices when I'm doing workshops on there as well. If you want to book a reading with me, you go to my website and follow the links and it will take you to my diary and it will show you what times and dates I've got available. So, and I do Skype readings, I do telephone readings, email readings face-to-face -face reading so there's a number of ways of having a reading i don't actually need someone in the room to do a reading i can work with their voice mm -hmm. and just work that way or it's, it's an email reading send me a question and i'll use the energy of that and tap into it so there's no excuse not to have a reading really <laughs> no there's none absolutely um right so our first caller um is called shanda and she's from um, chicago um hi shanda are you there yes i am hi i'm going to hand you straight over to Raphael, who's going to do your reading do you have a question for Raphael? um i hi, do shanda. um i have a close person with a medical condition um, and I have been noticing things that have been going on, and I feel like it's a connection to it um, from the other side. Do you have any insight into that? Okay, so you've been feeling things happen from the other side. Okay. Usually when we sense people from spirit in that way, it's usually just them reassuring us that they are, you know, they are okay, but they're also helping us as well through this difficult time at the moment so i'm going to link into spirit and see who wants to come forward here okay i've got a gentleman here in spirit i don't know if your father's in spirit if, if not then this is this gentleman will be on father's side of the family because i've got a, a father figure here in spirit so if it's not father it may be grandfather that's coming forward here and as i'm looking at him he is quite tall. I don't know if he stooped a little bit near the end, but I do feel like I'm stop my body's starting to, to curve a little bit. And he's showing me my back. So I don't know if he had problems with his back or if this is you that he's talking about here. But I'm seeing a lot of healing energy being sent. So and I keep hearing don't worry, don't worry. So there's been a lot of worries, a lot of prayers been going out to spirit. And I just feel this is just their way of saying, you know what, we're around you and everything's going to be okay. I don't know if there's an operation or there's a talk of an operation, but he keeps showing me something of that nature, which I feel may need a bit more discussion with. I'm just going to pull a card and just say how everything is going to go very quickly. Okay. Yeah. The Nine of Cups is your wish card. So this is saying everything's going to work out fine. As long as we stay positive, you know, and we don't let ourselves get 
down all the time, then everything should flow smoothly. The Ace of Wands here is saying, you know what, there's a lot more action, there's a lot more energy. I know your vitality might be low at this time, but I really do feel that you're going to start feeling it increase a little bit. And I actually feel that this is now the turning point when things start to get better. So those in spirit are just coming around you just to help you over this last little hurdle. But it is going to get better. They're just saying, keep the faith. Keep the faith. Hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to ask, Shanda? Um, so you don't feel or see anything around me that, like, has been happening at my home? I don't feel anything negative. I don't feel anything negative. Anything negative, negative that we either. seem to experience, a lot of the time it's our own fear, our own worry that we're projecting out. And sometimes that can cause things to happen. Those in spirit never hurt us. They actually come to help and heal us and to help right. us through a difficult time. So I feel a lot of what you're experiencing, if it's unnerving you or making you feel unsettled, a lot of that can be our own personal energy. And it's rippling out in our auric field, and that can be causing things to happen. So try not to be worried about it. You know, take some time out, treat yourself, maybe do some meditation just to bring your energy down. And you should start finding that things start to get a lot more easier, and all these bumps in the night start to, to lessen a little bit. Okay. Does that make okay, sense, Shanda? What's that? Does that make sense? Yes, it does very much so. Okay. Every single um, thing you said. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Well, thank you so much um, for coming through. Um, uh, you have a great evening. Um, thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to see if we have another caller coming through. Just going to wait for that. Okay, right. So there isn't another one. We don't have time. Um, so if you could just remind everybody of, of how to get hold of yourself, Raphael. If you want a private reading with me, if go to my website, www.mediumraphael.com. And there, if, if you follow the links, you can go straight to my diary and you can book a reading and all the information about me, about the readings that I do, about the workshops that I do, are all on the website. And you can also go to my Facebook page, Raphael Psychic Medium, and there I do Facebook Live, I do free mini readings, and all the information will be posted there as well. Do you also do um, uh, like live demonstrations as well? I do do live demonstrations, both at psychic fairs, both at private parties and in spiritualist churches. So I do do demonstrations as well as teach mediumship and psychic development. And I can teach on a one to one level or in a group. And so is it possible for somebody to perhaps if they wanted, um, you know, perhaps a little bit of teaching or coaching, say they're, they're a developing medium, would just like to brush up on their skills? to sort of do a Skype session with you if they're perhaps not based in the UK? Absolutely. Absolutely. I can do it over Skype. I can do it over the phone. Skype is better because I can see the person and I can see their energy. And, you know, I can find out where you're at with your psychic development and what it is you want to gain. And we can work with it from there because everyone's different. So I'll tailor make it to what that person needs. Okay, that sounds absolutely fantastic. And just tell us a quickly a little bit about the uh, the courses and the classes that you're running at the moment. Um, well, I'm doing, I've got a scrying workshop coming up very soon, which is all about working with crystal balls and mirrors and water. I'm hoping to do a mediumship weekend, teaching people how to develop their mediumship and their psychic abilities. Um, I also teach um, workshops on witchcraft and druidry and shamanism because I am a witch and I am a druid and a shaman. So I work with all those earth based spiritual pagan paths as well. Uh, I also run a goddess workshop. So if anyone's interested in the divine feminine and the goddess, I can also do a workshop on that. There's so many workshops. I'm adding new ones all the time. So. All I say is keep checking in on the website and all the information will be updated regularly. And whereabouts are these workshops based? It's, well, it depends where I am, but mostly 
it's in Oldham here in the UK. And I have a friend, a fellow psychic, um, that we both know, and Scott. <laughs> yeah. And that's where I do a lot of my readings and a lot of my workshops. But I, I've been known to go to people's houses as well and do small groups there as well. So it all depends on what that person needs and where I'm at at the time. So I try and adjust everything as best I can for everybody. Oh, I mean, that sounds absolutely amazing. Um, so I'll, I'll certainly keep an eye out on that. I'm very, um, very interested in, um, you know, some, some of the elements that you, you, you spoke about. Um, OK, so is there anything um, else that you would like to kind of um, add or highlight? You mentioned that you do um, a Facebook live session. Um, so how often do you do that? Is, on, is that on a specific day or? It's usually every every Friday every Friday and that it's usually round well times change vary depending on where I'm at and what I'm doing but I usually try and do it round about nine o'clock here in the UK. Mm. 